Hi gang, welcome back to uh, whatever I'm calling this series. Let's play really old Games Workshop board games. Yeah, suggestions on a postcard, please. This week, I've tricked Mira into playing the classic Games Workshop board game, Lost Patrol. Wait, classic? It doesn't look that classic, I definitely hear you say. Well, this is actually the version of the game from 2016, which is the second publication. The original Lost Patrol was released in 2000 and featured five of the classic plastic Space Marine Scout models fighting their way through the jungle and trying to find their way back to their drop pod before they were eaten by the mysterious lurkers representing presented in this version by some tokens. However, in the second publication, the scouts are updated to the current multi-part plastic scout kit, and the lurkers are replaced by gene stealers. The kit's fully plastic. It includes markers for infestations, more on those in a bit. So there are no cardboard tokens left, but it still uses these beautifully illustrated tiles revealed in a random order as the scouts explore the jungle. This is one of Gary's games, so he has, of course, fully painted it. The scouts and the stealers are both on jungle bases, and he's cut some foam to fit in the box to store them all. Another really, really nice kit, and way too nice to sit on the shelf unused, so let's try it out. Lost Patrol is a two-player game, with one player taking the scouts and one controlling the jungle and its inhabitants, the gene stealers. At the start of the game, the five scouts start on the clearing tile, and throughout the game, the stack of tiles are randomly revealed as they explore the jungle. The last tile to be revealed is always the drop pod, and if the scouts can end a turn with just one model on the drop pod, they win the game. Sounds easy, right? Well, it's not. It's notoriously difficult famously impossible for the Imperial player. The scouts almost always lose, and the fun of the game is seeing how close they can get. It's kind of helpful that a whole game of this only takes 10 to 20 minutes to play. In order to play, each turn is split into three phases. The first phase is the scout turn, where each scout can take two actions, either to move or to shoot their weapon. Moving's easy, you're allowed three scouts in any one tile that isn't the clearing tile. They can move one tile for every spent action. Shooting is also pretty simple. Each scout rolls a dice to shoot one of the gene stealers they can see. They trace the line of sight down the paths. On a six, they kill one. The heavy bolter guy just gets to roll two dice. So that's the scout's turn. The second phase is visibility, and it's here the game really becomes interesting. The gene stealer player takes tiles and places them on the board wherever a scout can see. Scouts can see any number of tiles in a straight line, but as soon as there's a bend or a split in the path, you stop placing tiles until a scout goes and looks around the corner. This way, clever scout movement and lucky tile selection can wear down the deck faster. The Gene Stealer player places the tiles in whatever order they want, but they can't place a tile in a way that would cut off a path unless there's no other option. Finally, they then remove tiles the scouts can't see. Any tile which a scout couldn't draw a line of sight to in one turn of movement, so that's by moving two spaces, gets removed. This means splitting up your scouts too much is dangerous. They could get cut off from each other, and when you return, the path might not be the same as it was before. Finally, it's the Gene Stealer player's turn, and they get three actions. An action consists of either placing a Gene Stealer at the end of any path, placing an infestation marker, or moving one tile's worth of Gene Stealers. If it's a group of three, they can move one space, a group of two can move two spaces, and a single Stealer can move three spaces at the cost of one action. Infestation markers are an interesting twist. Instead of placing gene stealers at the end of paths, infestation markers let you generate a new gene stealer in the same space as the marker. They're useful, but they're destroyed if a scout moves onto the same tile. Once the gene stealer player's done all their actions, the gene stealers attack any scouts they're standing next to. Each stealer has an attack strength of two, and the scout player just has to roll higher than the combined attack strength to win. Scout player gets plus one if the sergeant's in combat, because he's got this big chainsaw, and plus one if the heavy bolter guy can see the combat but isn't involved in it. If the scouts win, a stealer's killed. If it's a draw, the scouts are pushed back, and if they lose, a scout is killed and the survivors are pushed back. And that's it. That's all the rules. Seems pretty simple, right? Let's find out. So I'm playing the gene stealers, and I've given Mira the scouts. The game starts with the five scouts on their starting tile, the clearing, and then I add tiles one at a time until there's no more lines of sight. I place the tiles immediately surrounding the scouts, but as you can see, they're all bend, so no more tiles get placed. Now it's the scouts' first turn, and Mira spreads them all out in small groups with the heavy bolter scout covering them. That's the scout turn, so we add and remove tiles for visibility. I have to place tiles where they don't shut off paths if possible, so this branching tile has to go here, but the next one is also a branch, so it's going to cut off another path here. 
And then the Gene Stealer player, me, gets three actions, which are to place three Gene Stealers at the end of the path. Then the Gene Stealers attack any scouts in adjacent tiles. The two Gene Stealers here have an attack strength of four, mirror rolls of five, and kills one Stealer. If that Heavy Bolter guy wasn't in combat, she would have got plus one for supporting fire. Instead, he's attacked by another Gene Stealer, which is attack strength two, mirror rolls of four, and kills it. Back to the scouts, and the two who just got attacked keep exploring. The sergeant and the last shotgun scout spread out to explore some more, meaning that I'll have to expend an action to bring those gene stealers back into combat. Then we do visibility. The sergeant gets a corner and a couple of long paths riddled with tangleweed open up at the top of the board. Tangleweed means that a scout has to roll a four plus to move out of it, but gene stealers can just ignore it. In my turn, I place two more Steelers and move the existing one up to attack the Heavy Bolter guy. The pair at the top attack the Shotgun Scouts and Mirror Rolls of Four, which is a draw, so I push the Scouts back one space. But I can't move them into another Gene Stealer, so they just get pushed further down the path. The Heavy Bolter guy then kills the individual Stealer in the middle. Scout move and a Shotgunner and the Heavy Bolter guy explore the long path, and the Sergeant attempts to escape the Tangleweed but fails with both his actions. The two Scouts at the top move one space away from the Steelers and take a shot each, but neither rolls a six to kill a Steeler. Visibility again as the path at the top continues, and then it's my turn and I add two more Gene Steelers to take out the Sergeant and move two upper space. The top two attack and mirror rolls a draw, so the scouts are driven back again. The gene stealers follow. Then the sergeant's attacked and rolls a three, but gets a plus one because of his chainsword, so he draws and he's pushed back out of the tangleweed. In the scout turn, the shotgunner can't get out of that tangleweed, but the heavy bolter guy manages to move through just fine. The sergeant opts to explore and get some more tiles on the board, and the two scouts at the top move one square and shoot again, but they both miss. Visibility phase, and a nice long route opens up near the sergeant, as well as a long path up by the shotgun scouts. Then it's my turn, and I move the two gene stealers at the bottom after the sergeant, and then place an infestation token next to them so I can spawn stealers from there next turn. Finally, I move the two Steelers at the top in pursuit. The Sergeant kills one of the Steelers with his chainsword, but the Scouts at the top only roll a three, so one of them is dead. This is our fourth game, and that is the longest the whole team has survived so far. In Mira's turn, the Sergeant and the Heavy Bolter keep exploring, but both shotgun Scouts are stuck in Tangleweed and can't move, which means visibility starts to become a problem. First, I remove any tiles that no Scout could see if they were to move two spaces. Those tiles are discarded, the Scouts are still only just connected. Then I place the new tiles and another path opens up for the Sergeant. Two Gene Stealers then spawn from that infestation marker, and all three then move a space to attack the Sergeant. The Sergeant rolls a three against attack strength six, and he's killed. The remaining Shotgun Scout rolls a six against attack strength four, and kills one of the Stealers. Mira's turn again, and the top Scout finally escapes the Tangleweed, moving away from the Stealers. We realise we forgot to put this tile here down, but it doesn't change anything, so Mira continues her turn, moving the Heavy Bolt around the corner, and the Shotgunner escapes the Tangleweed and follows him. But turns out that was the wrong direction. The scouts are now so spread out they can't see the middle, and huge amounts of tiles are wiped from the board. Mira has to pick one group of scouts to get cut off and picks the lone guy at the top, so he's dead. Finally, with only two scouts remaining and only one tile left, the drop pod is placed on the board, right next to the Heavy Bolter Scout, followed by three Gene Stealers in my turn. The Heavy Bolter can't defend, so three Stealers eat him, and there's nothing for the final scout to do but try and shoot them, but he misses again and is eaten by the Stealers in the next turn. So there we go. That's a full game. That's also the most successful game of Lost Patrol I've ever seen. And it's still pretty hopeless for the Scouts. I didn't really tell Mira how hopeless this was before she started playing. So four games in, and while the rest of the club pack up, let's see what she thought. I thought it, the miniatures were very beautifully painted. <laughs> I like the scenery. Look, we've played four games. Obviously, you haven't won any. <laughs> I haven't won any. Um, you did suggest that I run the Scouts because traditionally I'm a good guy. Yeah. But you failed to mention that this game has been written so that the good people can't win. Yeah, I mean, it's famously no one can win Lost Patrol. It's funny that you say that because when other club members saw you getting this out, they yeah. said to me, oh, are you playing that game? And I said, yes, I'm playing the Scouts. And they went, ha oh, ha, good luck. That'll be a challenge. Yeah. So is this like we've played to prove a point? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think the, get, the objective of the game is to see how close you can get. We got pretty close in game four. That last game got really, really close. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure I would have won had I been playing in the baddies anyway, so. I think, yeah, I don't know. I think it's, um, uh, 
I think a lot of the time if you're playing the gene stealers, there's not many choices to make. That's true. Did you find it a bit dull being a gene stealer? It's it's interesting because I'm not it, like there's a few things you can do like infestations where I'm not completely sure how useful they are. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah it, it was it's fun, but you are very much seeing how far you can get. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I think if I played it more, I'd get better at strategy. And I did say a lot of my enjoyment was down to my opponent. Yeah. So out as an experience. Oh. I would give the experience this evening 8 out of 10, but I would probably give the game 6 out of 10. Yeah, everyone at the club was commenting on how winning this game was impossible. Maybe I should have told her that when I first suggested playing. Nah, that's part of the fun, right? Anyway, we have a stack of these games ready to play, so there will be more of these to come. Thanks to Mira for being a good sport, to the Hate Club for providing the venue and um, background artists, and thanks for watching. Thank you.